Hey everyone, happy Friday. Today's Friday, September 18th. Welcome to this week's video update for pro members. Taking a look at the markets. A little volatility the last few days. Always welcome in our world. We've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, we got this big push down and then we got a little bounce. Uh, we added some more short delta there. We've been talking about, especially in the live stream day trading room, we've been talking about just this little consolidation box that we're currently in. And we've been talking about how it keeps bouncing up and then coming down, bouncing up, coming down. Eventually this thing is going to crack to the downside. It looks like we're gonna wait until next week. We, we cracked a little bit and now we're, we're rebounding this afternoon. We've got about 25 minutes before the market closes at the time of this recording. So uh, now it could continue to consolidate. It could bounce all the way back up, which I mean, these are pretty, pretty decent sized moves within this consolidation box. But, uh, but like I said, I think I think we're going to crack to the downside and we've got the uh, we've got the short delta to cover that as well. So S&P is down 36 today, Dow down 212, Nasdaq down 140 and the Russell down 5.7 at this point. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, our well, let's start with the day trading. So I've been putting out recaps of our day trading. It's just it's going really, really well. But let me just give you a quick recap here. You can also check our Facebook group, and that's where we post the daily recaps if you've missed those. Uh, but let's start with the Mighty 90. So this is for this week, week of, the, uh, of 914. Mighty 90 is actually underwater a little bit. There's been very few opportunities. We're only taking a couple of these trades a day, and we're staying super small. We're, we're, what we're seeing is we're seeing pretty big overnight moves. And then in the morning, we're not getting the price reactions. We're not getting the, the two-way price swings uh, that we really want for the Mighty 90 strategy. And so just to reiterate, though, I mean, this, is, this strategy is still extremely solid. Just because we have a little bit of downside and, and fewer opportunities uh, does not mean it's dead. Uh, but we only took 11 trades. Uh, in fact, I wrote here, you know, I actually missed out on some nice trades, had some orders in for Tesla and Facebook and just never got filled. So there are there are more opportunities than we're getting. Uh, our execution hasn't been, you know, today especially wasn't wasn't excellent. But at the same time, uh, when the opportunities are not there, you've got to reduce size and you've got to, you know, let price action dictate where you're going. So we've just stayed super small, taken very few mighty 90 trades. Uh, and that's that's what you got to do. Pairs trades zero this week, and I talked about this in the day trade recap as well. But you know, when when the markets are moving like this, pairs trading is not really that exciting to get involved in. I really like doing pairs trading when there's nothing else to do and taking advantage of the spread. So we just didn't even take any pairs trades. And the big the big uh, the big story is the runners. I mean, we've we've just been killing it on the runner strategy, and we have not released the class yet on this. So we will be doing it very very soon. We've just been kind of honing in our exact exit criteria and, and, and a couple little things here. So we're getting ready to roll that out as an official class to add to the day trading course. But we've been trading it live in the room and kind of teaching it as we uh, as we kind of finalize the details. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, but you can see, you know, Monday booked over 570, over 1600 on Tuesday, almost 600 on Wednesday, over 3200 yesterday on Thursday, and then another 1700 today. So if we look at our our summary uh, for the week, total profits over seven thousand dollars this week, uh, and then uh, you can see the breakdown of Mighty 90 pairs trades and runners for the last three weeks. So we we started. So before I was just kind of piling in all of our day trading P&L into one lump. And obviously this needed to be broken out by strategy. So that's what I've been doing for the last few weeks. I didn't go back to the beginning and try to sort it out because that would have just been a project in itself. And so just going forward, just for the last few weeks, we'll be, we'll be using this format to break down per strategy and then totals here. So Total for the last few weeks, almost $15,000. And keep in mind, this is over the course of 14 trading days. So we had five trading days this week, four last week because of Labor Day, and five the, the week before. So that's 14, making $15,000. So averaging over $1,000 per day the last few weeks. So just great stuff. Uh, okay, so that's day trading. If you guys have any questions, let us know. If you haven't been in the day trading room, get in there. It's good stuff. We're having a lot of fun. A lot of people making some money. Uh, a lot of people posting, I mean, $2,000, $3,000 profits today. So 
Really good stuff. Make sure you uh, check that out if you haven't. All right, so let's go back. Let's go to the alerts now, starting with the 14th, which was Monday. Our first trade was QQQ. So we opened up a new bunker in the queues. And so let's take a look at that. And that was Monday the 14th. So that's as price kind of started bouncing back up. We were anticipating this rollover. And, and so we, we added some short delta here. So let's take a look at the queues. We've got several positions in the queues. Uh, let's start with that bunker that we added, which is this one here. So we're up a little bit on that, looking for a little bit more downside before we do anything there. We've also got a bunker in November that we're getting ready to take off. We're going to take this off next week, see if we get a little bit more follow through to, to the downside and see if we can get out with a little profit in that one. We've been in that one for a couple months now. Now we've got a couple of vertical spreads. One is in the weeklies in October. We're up uh, a little over 100 since we did that roll. And then we got the one in the monthly Octobers. We're up about 357 on that one. If we still get, if we get some more continuation to the downside and we get over 50% of max profit, we'll roll that one as well. Next trade, Adobe. So we got an earnings iron duck in Adobe. Let's take a look at Adobe. So this one's right smack dab in the duck head. And we've got about 20 minutes before the close of the market. So we're just going to go ahead and let this one expire. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty well centered. So we're going to book hopefully a duck head here unless something crazy happens here in the last 18 minutes before the market closes. Uh, so looking at a full duck head of 578 on that one. So nice trade there. That was an earnings iron duck. Next trade, gold did a closing adjusting trade. So we've had these two verticals on from previous iron condors. Uh, this was a put vertical and price uh, in gold made a move higher. So we went ahead and closed that one out, booked over 40% of max profit on that uh, iron condor as a whole. We only had eight days left. And then um, now we're still holding our other piece of our other iron condor. So let's go to gold and check that out. So, oh no, actually, I'm sorry, we closed it out. Um, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. Here it is. All right. So here's, the, here's the other piece. So we've got price sitting right here. Now we've only got, what is it? Six days left. Yeah. We've got six days left. So price, we're, we're hoping price comes down a little bit and we can close this one out for a profit as well. I know some of you are already closed this out when, when gold was trading lower and booked that profit. We're going to wait and see if we get a little down move. If not, we'll just close this out. And in the, uh, and so what I was referring to, this one is a full iron condor that we that we put on today, uh, just adding uh, adding some more premium applied volatility still elevated here. So just waiting for some more time to pass to uh, to benefit that trade. I uh, did a closing trade in SPY. So we had an iron duck that was in the duck head. It was too close to the edge to just let it expire. So we went and closed it out for 19 cents, uh, booked, uh, booked about 500 and some dollars on that one. Opening adjusting on, uh, so this is the iron condor that we just put on on gold. And I'm sorry, that was actually yesterday that we put that on. And then ES, rolling adjusting trades. So we have a couple long put verticals here. We rolled this one out. We only had one day to expiration, so we rolled it out to 36 days. Adjusted those strikes down as the market moved. So let's take a look at ES. We've still got a couple pieces here. We've got this one. This is the one we just rolled. We're up about 60 bucks since we did that roll. And then the other one is, uh, is right here. And we're up about 490 on that one. So if we get a little bit more downside, we will roll that one down and out as well. Closing trade in SPX. So we had a weekly double calendar. Got a nice move down on Thursday, along with some elevated implied volatility. Allowed us to book a, book a nice profit on that one. Right around $300 is what we ended up booking on that trade. Uh, SPX Iron Duck. As the market was coming down, we added another duck. So let's take a look at SPX. We've now got two ducks. This is the one we just added. You can see price is pretty close to where we put it on. And then and that, and that one expires on the 3rd of October. Uh, the other one that we have on as well is right in the duck head here. We're up a few hundred bucks, but we're, uh, we're going to hold this closer to ex expiration, which is on the 24th. So next week, hopefully we can Slap another duck in the head on that one. And then DIA, closing adjusting trade. So we had a, oh, so this is one. So overnight we got assigned on these, uh, on our calls. So we were, uh, then, then we had, we woke up, we had 400 um, short shares 
of DIA. So we just closed those out. And then the remaining 280 long call, we closed that out. So we just closed it out. And next week, uh, we'll, we'll look to potentially add that short call vertical back in. So we're just holding the one in DIA now, which is this one here. And it's pretty close to where we had rolled last up about 30 bucks. So just looking for some more downside to benefit that. And our, our overall short delta is about one to one on our short delta versus theta ratio when you beta weight it to spy. So we've got a we've got some short delta ready for some more down move if it comes. RH, so this is a post earning short put vertical. Unfortunately, this got caught in the downdraft of the market. So if we take a look at the charts and, and go to RH. So we had earnings kind of bounced around here and it looked like we were going to get a move higher and then it just got caught in that in that big move lower in the overall market. It's still staying pretty steady. I was considering rolling this, but it was going to be for a pretty sizable debit. Uh, I still think, you know, based on this price action compared to the rest of the market, I still think next week we probably will get a continuation to the upside. But uh, I'd rather just shed that long delta and because uh, I, I just think the market overall is going lower. So I, I don't want to fight that with a with a long position. So we just went ahead and closed that out. And that's all the alerts for the week. Let's take a look at the other positions we've got going. I mentioned ES, Gold, Natty Gas. So we've got this adjusted short strangle in Natty Gas. And price is hanging out right here. So we're up about 1200 bucks since we rolled this last. Uh, if we get a little bit more downside in Nat Gas, um, we'll, we'll get to a point where we're over 50% of max profit and we'll look to potentially roll or close that. Bonds, we've got this adjusted strangle. We're up about a little over $1,000 on this one since we rolled it last. We need a little bit of up movement to get back to center here. Uh, but both net gas and, and bonds, we've got a lot of time left. Apple down a couple percent today. So Apple's been on a downhill slide. Now we're over 50% of max on this. So we will look to potentially roll this next week. Just figured we'd get it, give it over the weekend and, uh, and, and deal with it early next week. Mentioned Adobe, John Deere. John Deere's been staying strong, even with this market uh, rolling over. Look at John Deere. I mean, it is strong. Apparently, people still love their green tractors, but we've got some short delta in there, and it's just outside of range, so we're just continue to hold this. I mentioned DIA, IWM. We've got several pieces here. Let's start with the most recent expiration. We've got a long put vertical. Price is hanging out right inside the range. We've got a... Another one, uh, the next in the next cycle, pretty close to the same area, right inside the range there. We've got a bunker in November, which will take off early next week. We're getting real close to that 60 days to expiration. So we'll probably close that out. We'll just see if we get a little bit of a continuation uh, downwards next week first. And then we've got the one out in December, which uh, is in is in good shape. Just looking for some more downside on that as well. We mentioned the Q's SMH. We've got this adjusted strangle. Price is pretty well centered here. We're up about $500 on this one since we did our last roll. SPX, SPY. We've got this iron condor. Uh, we're getting close to it. We, we actually could have taken this off today. I was, I was looking at potentially taking it off, but I figured we're so centered. See if we can get some more theta decay into early next week, and then we'll close this out, close this out and, put, and then potentially add another one to you know, keep, that, keep that trade going. XBI. XBI is another one that's really strong. Uh, this is the biotech ETF, but this one has actually been really strong compared to the market. And so we need a little bit of downside action to get back into center on this one. And then lastly, XLK. We've got a long put that we added. So we're about $370 on that. We're just holding this for, for some more downside action. I'd like to book 50 to 100%. You know, we, we're in this for about 1245. So if we can book 12, you know, 900, 1200 bucks on this one. That's, that's kind of what we're looking for. And if this market does roll over, that's exactly what'll happen. So if we get some more continuation to the downside into next week, we could potentially take that one off for a nice profit. And then we've got a long put vertical, which we'll, we'll also roll next week. Uh, got a good over 50% of max profit on that one at this point. And then lastly, we have a bunker here as well, which is currently up a couple hundred bucks. Looking for some more downside to benefit that. So that's all the alerts. Those are all the positions. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a fantastic weekend, and we will catch up with you on Monday. Cheers.